having problems with my cursor. It keeps turning off the video and the cursor's not even near it. Never mind. Anyway, I made this the other day with strands of chips. But what I'm going to do today is a little bit different. I had shown what I was going to do and then undid it so that I could show you what I did. Heard a bleep, looked up, and my video had stopped. So I'm starting all over, but without the string. I'm not going to bother to do that. This is why I have three strands, and the three strands are all together in being strong. But what I'm going to do now is take one strand, the one that appears to be in the middle, and I'm going to thread it with chips. Chips, you can count beads to see how many beads you want, but you can't do that with chips. Obviously, they're not the same size, so the number really wouldn't matter. String on all of these chips. And the point of it is to show you that you can imagine and create more than just one single strand of something. A few decades ago, when I first was selling my jewellery, and I was making fine jewellery, pearls, gold, that sort of thing, and Along with my website, I decided to take my necklaces to jewellery shops, which had advertised that they would also take consignments, not junk shops. They were good shops. And I stopped doing it because they were trying basically to get what I had for nothing so that they could turn around and sell it. One of them did admit to me, one did admit that he could quite easily double what I had asked him for and still sell it because I wasn't greedy. Most jewelers would make a piece of jewelry and mark it five times more than it had cost them. And I only doubled it. I took the cost of the jewellery supplies and doubled that. That was, that was it. And he told me, well, that's like wholesale pricing. But this one woman, she was selling pearl necklaces. So I showed her some of mine. Before she walked in, I showed her staff. And they were just... They loved what I had made. And she came in, and I'm sure she had seen it before she came in. She just kind of picked it up and she was like, oh, you're a bead stringer. And I was like, okay. Then she said, well, after looking at it for a while, she said, well, if I commissioned you to make pieces like this, would you do it for me? By telling me I was just a bead stringer, she was trying to get me down where she could get the necklaces for nothing. I don't think I was born that stupid. So she didn't get any of my necklaces. One woman did tell me that if, here in Brighton, did tell me that if she put my 
jewellery in her shop. No one would buy hers. And she was serious because she was basically selling just trinkets. The selling market barely doesn't. It's not there. And it, I don't, I think it perhaps might have been a bit. I did sell a bit in the 80s, but early 90s, but after that, things went a bit pear-shaped with the economy and people weren't really buying that much in terms of high-end luxury items. It was one of those recession periods. However, that said, it never really recovered. And I was reading an article recently about a fashion designer who celebrities had worn her dresses on the red carpet. She was good. But she actually had to cancel her show in Paris because she could no longer afford it. She was actually taking out loans because having a, a show, having models down the catwalk costs money. It's not free. And because so few people knew of her, even though celebrities did know of her and were seen photographed wearing her clothes, she was taking out loans in the hundreds of thousands of pounds just to run a show. And she got so far in debt that she couldn't carry on. So she had to stop. It's the same way with trying to sell jewellery at the end of the day, because you're buying the supplies. If you buy cheap junk, and you're not able to buy bulk. What you'll find is that you're going to be paying more to make it than anyone would pay to buy it. If you buy high-end supplies like I was buying, what you're going to find is people do like it, but the economy makes it very difficult to sell. You have to buy the supplies, you have to buy the jewels, you have to pay for your website. I built mine but it, I still had to pay for the domains and all of that. Mind you, I built mine back in the days before these point and click formats. I had to code everything including the link from the thumbnail to the big picture. I would be up late at night doing that. And you have to pay for the packaging. The nicer the jewellery, the nicer you want the packaging to be. The nicer the packaging will be, the more expensive. And just like that woman who wasn't selling enough to pay for the catwalk, once the economy took a, a downturn, I wasn't selling enough to make it viable. So I'm just showing you what you can do basically for yourself. But with jobs being what they are, people are, are, tr are trying to think of ways that they can do things from home to make money. And I get that. I just want people to have a realistic view from my experienced point of view of what that would actually be for you. It's better for you to just make pieces for yourself that no one else has and let people admire it. If people offer, I've had people 
If I pay you, would you make this for me? But what they don't expect is how much it costs to make it. And they're not willing to pay that. I think I told this story once. It was absolutely spot on. It was a story about a woman who had a little shop where she sold her handmade jewellery. And another woman came in thinking that she was a hard bargain driver. And she told the vendor, I know what the supplies cost for you to make this bracelet. I know what the tools cost. And I will only pay you that amount of money for this bracelet. And so the woman, this was her design as well, just like these are my design. She finally said to the woman, OK, you pay for the supplies and I'll take care of it. So the woman paid her for the supplies and then went home bragging to all her friends that she had got this gorgeous bracelet at cost. When she got the parcel and opened it, she found loose beads and tools, the supplies to make it that she had paid for. And a note therein, no notes, no instructions of how to make it at all. But there was a note that said, here are the supplies you paid for. If anything is missing, let me know. And I was like, because that's what people want from you. They want you to give them something for nothing. And so it's really simply about me showing you how to make things, but for yourself. I know that there will be trolls, and by the way, they will be quickly removed. I don't put up with it. I have met some hypocritical, fake bullies, some really nasty people on YouTube, and I just don't have the time. You try to reason with people, you try to show people things. All they're interested in is what they're obsessed with. So for my channel, you won't have to worry about long threads of trolls arguing because they won't be here. But I know that there will be those who will try to say, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're making these to sell yourself, you know it. Or, or other things, but, you know, or are you protecting your design because you want to sell it yourself? No, I'm protecting my design because it's my design. Okay, but as far as selling it goes, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct. And you can test it out, but you'll quickly find that I am correct. The reason I'm making these videos instead of selling them is because they don't sell. But I would like you guys to enjoy wearing them. Enjoy making things for yourself and wearing them. But I don't want you to have any ideas that you can make these and make a lot of money. There are people on YouTube who are selling. There are a few people making necklaces and selling, but what you don't know is how much they're selling or how much they're selling it for. Even having a lot of subscribers does not mean that they're selling their jewellery. It's, it's, it's most likely that they're still just hoping that they will. With exposure this time of year, blah blah blah. Speaking of blah blah blah, hi Princess Pinky. But I just want you to have a realistic view that if you sell one or two, that's brilliant, but don't expect to. That's why 
I'm willing to show you how to do it. Now I have strung two and I'm now working on the third. These tiny little beads take forever to pick up. But the thing about tiger tail is that it makes them even easier to pick up. And eventually I'm going to be showing you more of that. Because at the end of the day, the more unique the piece that you can make, the more you will enjoy wearing it or giving it as a gift. People love, and I know this from experience, people love being given a unique piece of jewellery that has value and that no one else has. But here, a caveat, again, <clears throat> just be aware that for whatever reason, I think it's because they're afraid they might have to pay out. The post office here, the postal system, they do in some areas. My area is not so bad. My area is not so bad. But there are areas where post tends to get misdelivered or lost and they don't want to pay out. So I stopped sending gifts, nice sets of jewellery to my friends because the post office, the Royal Mail, did not want to insure it for what it was worth. So as in any case, when they want to pay out nothing, they try to make it appear that what you have is nothing. And the last necklace I tried to send was worth £500. It was a fine piece of jewellery. And my friend, because I can't go out, my friend took it to the post office for me. She had to go have a lie down after it was over because the man kept when he asked her what it was, she told him it's a pearl necklace and that she wanted to insure it for £500. He immediately, it was like dealing with, some, with that bracelet woman, he immediately started trying to find ways to devalue it. So he asked her, okay, what shop did it come from? Doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't. But she said it didn't. My friend made it. Oh, she made it. Well, then it's not worth insuring. Yes, it is. So I finally told her, OK, look, tell him that we'll insure it for the price of the supplies, the bead, the, the pearls, the gold, etc. £250. This was a few years ago. Nope. Not even the cost of the pearls themselves. And this had been going on for quite some time. She was talking to me on the phone because she couldn't get him to cooperate. And I finally told her, you know what? Forget it. Tell him no insurance. Don't worry about it. Just forget it. And I told my friend, we're going to just have to stop sending gifts because they are so afraid of having to pay out that they won't allow you to insure it. So there are all sorts of reasons. All of the wonderful beads and things that I used to get before Brexit, all I can use is what I can find here in the UK. Because to try to get anything else is not viable. If you try to go to Amazon, eBay, what you'll end up getting is 
They might tell you that it's emeralds. What they won't tell you is it's emeralds that no jeweler would have, no jeweler of repute, because they're not very good quality. You'll be getting things from China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, stuff that they would buy for a fiver, but expect you to buy for 50. And you, it has come to a time where we must be cynical. We must ask questions. We must lift the rock and look under it. And so I just stopped buying stuff from them because I could see. How, and you know when you start to pay for the shipping and it's £12, then you look for the origin. China. I just buy from local businesses, quality websites that I've come to know. That's why I include their links. No, they are not paid adverts. They're just telling you where I managed to get these. But I also tell people, if you are in fact... If you are, in fact, from the other side of the pond, from North America, whether it's Canada or the contiguous 48, you can order from Fire Mountain Gems, and I'll include their link just for the sake of it. None of these, these supplies have come from there, but if you're from that part of the world, there is an excellent family-owned jewellery supply company. All of the people who work there make jewellery themselves. They know the supplies and they, only, they send their buyers out to look for high-quality supplies. So I had purchased from them for years and years. But after Brexit, even buying from... The other side of the pond changed. Everything changed. So I don't buy from them, but other people might. And if you go to their website, you will find the most wonderful things that you can just let your imagination grow wild on and make anything you want. Now, I now have three strands, two with chips and small silver beads. I mean, two with small beads and small silver beads and one with chips. What I'm now going to do is overlap that. It's not going to look, it's not going to look like much yet, but I'm overlapping the two strands of beads behind the strap of chips and then overlapping them in front of the strand of chips. And then I will do this. Put a bead on to anchor them. <clears throat> Now, I'm not pausing this time because what I've discovered is I had made this necklace with a video. And when I tried to post it, I think it must have been this thing with my cursor where when I paused it and hit the pause button that's just above, the cursor must have hit the stop button and about half of the video wasn't there. So I decided not to pause anymore, but to just make it straight through. So unfortunately, there will be times when you'll be watching paint dry. But this part, the making it 
<coughs> wrap round does work. I was so annoyed because I had shown in my first attempt at this video, I had shown it finished because I finished it last night and showed you this is what we're going to do and then took the beads off to start over and show you what we were going to do. And instead the video stopped. So I just thought, all right, I, mean, I didn't, I didn't, didn't restream them <clears throat> because I have limited daylight. But I did just decide I'm not, I'm not touching that button. Now let's get holding it tightly in place. I get a big bead. This big bead, put it on the three strands of wire and pull it taut and hold it. And this is what you'll have when it's finished. You'll see, you'll see when it's finished because it wraps around nicely. Now, <coughs> I'll put a square chunk, rectangular chunk actually. Thread that through. And another of that same bead. I bought these silver beads years ago, a good supply of them, and I'm still using, I'm about to be using the last of them. I have not been able to find them again. So either the seller went out or I bought them from Fire Mountain Gems and can't find them again. One of those two. Now I want to take a larger size jasper bead. This larger size. And I have several different sizes here. This will be a long video simply because I can't cut anything out. The cursor on this laptop has been going wild for a month or so now, where it just floats around the screen. And I'm just can't be bothered. Now I'm going to put around silver bead and as you can see tiger tail it's wire but it's so fine that it will thread through these beads without a problem. Now one two three four five six seven eight nine of the medium size let's put this lid on And nine of these, nine millimeter beads. Thing is, once you get the pattern and the ability, you can actually use whatever beads you like. Of course, I mean, it isn't one of those things where this is a particular pattern that will only work with a particular bead. It's about learning a pattern and then doing what you want. <clears throat> and by tagging me and, and 
giving me credit for the design. From what I understand, I know when someone has tagged me and I then can go to the video and watch it, see if what I'm showing you is working for you, if it's if it has been easy enough for you to understand, and also encourage you. There's nothing like a bit of well done. And I will enjoy seeing that people are actually benefiting from these. So, yeah, just let me know. And we'll get it done. I'm looking at 31 minutes already. I hope it's not an hour, but as I said, this necklace that I'm wearing, 15 minute video it would have been, but when I uploaded it and began watching it, it was an 11 minute video. So no more pausing, I suppose. The pausing on the last one was really jerky as well. It just it didn't work correctly. And so I think that it's just the calibration is off. So it will have to be a long video, but that's okay because you can pause the video, take the steps that you want to take, and even just forward through. Now I've seen when I upload videos that I can allow chapters. Up until now I've never done that because I've never seen the need. But I think if my jewelry instructions are going to go on rather long, I'll try doing that and seeing if it works for you. And you can always let me know if it helps or not. The round beads, you do want to count so that you get each side the same length. I'd even thought of making the video in parts, but with the pause button, yeah, I just think maybe I should just let chapters do it. And see if that works. Because if I just do, the thing is, if I just do a video that's parts of it, and then and post another one that's part of it. I did a part one and part two the last time this happened for the baking, the croissants. And I noticed that I don't think very many people recognized that there was a part one because part two got twice as many views. So I don't think making a part one and part two would actually help. Okay, so here's the final bead for that. Yep. Now, I need to make sure everything is tight. And now I need five of the eight millimeter. Yeah. And for the eight millimeter, I use 
a six millimeter silver bead. You always want, well, you might decide differently, so I shouldn't say you always want, but I always like to have the accent bead slightly smaller than the main bead because then the main bead is the main attraction and the silver bead is just the accent it just makes it look better and again these all three wires will go together through the holes so that's fine I can tell you one thing. I am capable of doing things if I think they might be wanted. So if I see anyone come and comment on my video with timestamps, it will be deleted and they will be dismissed. If I think time steps are in order, I'll put them on. The entire thing behind people who put time stamps on is they're trying to draw off attention for themselves at the creator's expense. And it's whether they realise it or not, I don't think they care. It's a bit of a backhanded insult to the creator. You don't quite know what you're doing, so I'm going to do this for you. Uh, yes, I do. And no, you're not. So don't even go down that road. Now then. One last bead, that's a small one, got mixed in. I've reached a point where I can pick up a bead and see what size it is. But as I said, I've been doing this for decades. So you'll get there as well, because sometimes a size of, different size of bead will get mixed in. But you'll, you'll notice as soon as you see it, that it's the wrong size. I used to be able to tell, I used to be able to spot, even in a black and white picture, the difference between a rail diamond and a simulated diamond. Quite easy to spot if you know them, but they can do them so brilliantly now that they're surprisingly similar. Now, I have done that. Now it's time to tie it off. So what I'm going to do is take a silver eye pin. I have a ring that I made from a particular seller here in the UK who sold these cubic zirconias and they have such fire and spark that people think it's actually a diamond. I resisted cubic zirconia decades ago because they weren't any good but now they are brilliant. They've come up with new ways of doing things. Where are the uh, I don't believe it. I put the clamps elsewhere. I'm not going to pause, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just mimic it and then show you the finished end. What you want to do is put the crimp 
on first. And I'm using a two millimeter by one millimeter crimp so that you have a good wide hole. Then you'll put the eye pen on. What you'll then do is put the, the three strands together and put them through the crimp bead and they will go through. Even if you had to put them through one at a time, they would go through, but they will go through. Then you want to pull the crimp very, very taut, very taut. And you will likely do that with a pair of grips because it will it will be something where you will truly have to pull and force the wire down taut against the crimp. Then what you would do is take the grip and smash the crimp and it's done. After that, once you've got that crimp crimped, you would take this and you, you remember how I showed you to, to bend these. Now this, these are 22 gauge silver again. You can, they're so malleable that you can move them with your hands, but they will keep their shape. It's perfect, perfect gauge. So you would then wrap this, loop it round and wrap it around itself. I think I can just about show you what I mean. You can see here that there's a loop. Underneath here, you can't quite see, but underneath here is where it's been wrapped around, like I'd shown you before. And this big, is a big mouth silver bead, which slides over the wire. It covers the wire that I just showed you how to wrap. Then you extend the silver eye pin up and you just wrap it around the top of the cone and you thread it through the loop for the clasp before you wrap it because it will just be easier. Your life will be easier that way. And the great thing about this is that the magnet is strong. The magnet is very, very strong. So it will stay connected when you're wearing it. You'd have to pull it really hard to get it to come off. But the downside to that is that whilst you're trying to wrap, I will make another video another time in which I'll show you this. It, it's, don't worry, but I am going to talk you through it. As you can see, the magnet also sticks to the tools. So while you're trying to work with the wire, you'll keep finding this to be the case. So when I make that video, you'll see that it, it is a bit of a trick. Just be patient. And uh, there's the wrap did come out. The wrap did. You can see now, I think, the end where I had cut off after I wrapped it round. But that sinks back down into the cone. So it is a bit of a trick trying to do that wrap whilst you're battling with the magnet. But once it's done, it is a good sturdy connection. And in many ways, it's a better connection than the S clasp or other lobster clasp because those, the wire can slip through, but not this one. So I do like this one better for hold, but it is a bit of a trick to work with. So yeah, I'll make another video showing that. But as for this, now I have to make it look finished without it being finished. As for this, you can work the strands around each other.
and then pull them taut to hold. I'm going to wrap it a couple of times. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to wrap it a couple of times, I think. But it will, it will hold. And then, once you've pulled it taut and finished it, wrap it around the top, wrap it around the bottom, pull it taut, and gotcha. this is what you have. A very unique piece rather a rather unique piece and a nice necklace so a little bit of effort but well worth the effort and i'll leave i'll leave chapters so that it, it breaks up a bit and see what i can do to help you to find the place that you need to find as you're going through it and hopefully that will help if not, there's always pausing it, but I'll see what I can do because the, the videos are going to necessarily be quite long. And next time I'll try to also remember the crimps. Had everything set out by the crimps, but I hope you enjoy it.